Hey, Blue Table fans, Sean here. I'm recording on my computer, so the audio is not going to be that amazing. I also have a little bit of a frog in my throat this morning, so uh, it's going to be it's going to be pretty. I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this new battle suit that uh, Forge World has just put out for the Tau, and I'm going to give you kind of a preliminary overview. Oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. Wow. All right, so first off, let's take a look at the model. Like the Irvarna battle suit, it, uh, you know, it's has it has resin components that fit over a regular uh, Riptide. So this is like a big flying oval base down here. So this guy's this guy's pretty huge. In fact, they, they've got a size comparison here to a regular battle suit. There it is. So, uh, now the Irvarna almost looks like it's hunched over because it has that big hood on it. But this one, this one definitely is upright. Uh, let's look at the back. It has this huge, like, jetpack array. I mean, it's almost, it's almost over the top with, like, wings that come out the side. So, come on. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Let's take a look at it from this angle here. There you go. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty elegant jetpack there. Now, let's take a look at the rules. This was like, I just don't even know where to start with this. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go to the top. Now, something I thought that was funny is, uh, it was, it says, rushed into deployment after the success of the Irvarna battlesuit. Uh, so, yeah, literally from the sales success of the Irvarna battlesuit, this was rushed into literal production out at Forge World. So, I don't have the Tau book with me, but it looks to me to look like the standard Riptide stat line. And quite frankly, I'd put this up against any of the Tyranid monstrous creatures. Uh, because, I mean, good gracious, it just, it, and it has a two plus save. I mean, come on. So it's a jetpack monstrous creature, so it has a jetpack, unlike the Irvarna. Uh, it can have shielded missile drones, regular shield drones, and it can take, uh, support systems from the Tau, Tau Codex, not going to talk about that right now. Uh, so... Let's look at its war gear. So you've got uh, the battle suit itself. It has it has two weapons. So let's go back to the picture. One is a phased plasma flamer, and the other is an ionic discharge cannon. So I'm imagining this guy here on the right arm is the ionic discharge ca cannon, and uh, this thing here is the flamer. But I'm really, really, uh, I'm really not sure. I'm pretty sure this though is is the one that I said it was. So, uh, it's got a Ravelin shield generator, a vectored thruster array, and flechette dispersal pods. All of these are amazing. What? Uh, also has hit and run, supporting fire, and uh, Nova reactor. So, um, let's see. Let, now, let's go down and look at the, what these weapons do. So I want to point out the tower becoming really sort of a, um, or when you look at the Maelstrom of War scenarios, Tau have to become like this midfield, brutal, close-range firefight type army. And this battlesuit certainly fits. Personally, I can't wait to get one. Can't wait to get one and try it out. Give Rich's orcs a run for their money. Uh, so it has a multi-tracker and black sun filters. Now the Ravelin shield generator is this typical 5-up invulnerable that you see on these larger creatures like the Wraith Knight. Uh, but it gets a 4-up against anything coming from within 12 inches. And I might point out that 12 inches is where this guy really wants to be. And uh, Or close combat. So a 4-up in close combat, that is pretty good. Uh, okay, so phased plasma flamer, that is a tongue twister. So you've got it. So it has torrent, but only at six inches. That means you place the small end of the 
flamer template within six inches and then the larger end anywhere that's not closer than six inches uh, or closer than the smaller end. So you've got a Strink 6 AP3 Heldrake-esque version that's heavy one. And then you can do full rotation, which is, by the way, you should do this every single time. Um, and yeah, just, just use that. And it's Strink 6 AP2, heavy two, two shots, what? And the only downside is that it gets hot. So that weapon is, and I, I was, because I kind of jumped to dessert first when I looked at this. I was like, oh, it has that or the ionic discharge cannon. Well, both of those are pretty good. So, you know, you can't go too wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. It has both. It has both of these things. So um, now, again, I don't have my Tau book in front of me and my head is just full of information. So I'm pretty sure there's something that can make it so you can shoot at different targets with the same guy and if that's the case you definitely want that with this guy because both of these weapons kind of speak to different situations uh, quite frank like uh, against um, uh, orcs because <laughs> I always imagine myself uh, trying to beat the orcs um, this uh, the plasma flamer is ridiculous because it gets rid of the cover save and orcs are toughness four jeez this is like two up and they're just dead. Two up and goodbye. Even the mega knobs. Now think about that. If you dropped both of them, both of these uh, full rotation torrents on a unit or anything on paladins, you could just do two wounds. You just need you just need a two up. I mean, it's it's amazing. It's just so good. Two of these would just be unfair. So, Ionic Discharge Cannon, this is basically a 12-inch range battle cannon. Oh, did I mention it has, it's Heavy 3 Blind and Haywire Burst? I mean, so, Haywire Burst is for each successful hit this weapon inflicts on a vehicle, roll a single Haywire hit, as well as resolving the attack from the weapon's profile. So, you can easily, you could easily peel off full, you know, I mean, you could you could glance Land Raider in a series of shots. What's the uh, ballistic scale? Probably three. No, four! Oh, my gosh. Seriously? And... Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Oh, I am so wrong with this. Okay. So I saw the Strength 3 AP3, and I'm like, oh, it's like a battle cannon. No, no, no. This does not have... This does not have uh, a template for it. So... But it is Heavy 3 Blind Haywire Burst. Amazing. Flechette Dispersal Pods, uh, long story short, when it arrives in uh, on the field, it can uh, be a deep strike. Or uh, it's got some special rules. So anyway, it shows up and it can shoot the Flechette Dispersal Pod at a unit within 6 inches. Assault D6. Not that much, but it's nice. Now... Now, here it is, the Vector Thrust Ray. See, now you've got some movement shenanigans going in here. Um, so at the beginning of any controller's movement phase, the battle suit may choose to move as though it was a swooping, monstrous creature for that phase, as this represents a long, bounding leap rather than true flight. Does not gain the Vector Strike special rule. and and But it may not be used in two consecutive turns. So, Wow. That is, that is amazing. Um, so now let's look at the, um, at the Nova Reactor. So it's the same. You roll a three up, and if you get the three up, it's great. And if it's not, then you take a wound and you get nothing. Uh, but it's it totally worth it. You can increase the invuln save against close combat to three up. So this speaks to the fact that this, this critter is going to have to get so close De it's def to use any of its weapons, it's going to have to be within charge range of the enemy. So, um, uh, but, you know, with toughness 6 and a 2-up save, you're you're looking pretty good. But you got to be careful what it is that you're getting next to. Because, like a unit of Mega Knobs, or a unit of Paladins, or uh, any of those heavy hitters could, could really uh, hurt this guy. Okay, Ionic Discharge Cannon is treated as heavy 
3 plus D3, that's basically an average of two extra shots with that. So uh, with that, you could definitely take out a vehicle. Let's do the math on it. Five shots, uh, you're going to hit with three, and you're going to get a haywire hit on all of those, on top of the regular thing. So haywire is two through five as a glance, so you're going you're gonna to get three glancing hits out of this for sure. And uh, so that's going to be most uh, vehicles are going to have all their hull points stripped from that. But then on top of that, you get the strength eight thing going on. So this is pretty much, this guy is reliable. This is so reliable and can really get in there and move around. Escape thrust. Ha, <laughs> awesome. At the start of the movement phase, the model may be, may be removed from play and placed into ongoing reserves. So, um... Let's uh, take a look at here. I'm pretty sure the ba the battle suit gives deep strike. So uh, in that case, boy, you could just keep you could just keep showing up. Uh, but it means you do basically skip a turn, but you can escape from close combat using that that power. So not too bad. That's kind of a second life. Vector evasion gives the jink special rule. And when thrusting or swooping gets gains a three plus, uh, excuse me, a four plus cover save as if it had moved flat out. So guys, first glance, this is a great, this is a great model, does a great thing, and uh, I would, uh, and it's a fast attack choice, so it's not competing for slots uh, necessarily, depending on what your build is, and uh, I, I must highly recommend. In fact, um, contact us today if you would like to have one of these made up for you. Uh, the email is projects at bluetablepainting.com. Uh, you can also call us. Uh, we have a front desk number, and we also have a number for inquiries. Inquiries means you're asking about setting up a project. Everything's custom. Everything's set up individually, which is the great thing about working with, uh, with BTP. So, guys, that's what I have about the Ivara, Irvarna, and Ivara. It's going to get a little confusing. All right, thanks for tuning in. And if you're a Tau player, you need to get one of these models. They are amazing.